Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at haloalkanes. The haloalkanes are a family of compounds where they have an alkane structure where one of the hydrogen atoms has been substituted for a halogen. We're going to start by looking at classification and naming of the haloalkanes. Classification is similar to that for the alcohols where here we would have a primary haloalkane as the halogen atom is on the end of the chain. This would be a secondary haloalkane where we have the halogen somewhere in the middle of the chain and then finally a tertiary haloalkane where the halogen is situated at the branch point of a chain. Now we will have a look at the naming of haloalkanes. The first step in naming a haloalkane is to find the longest chain. This chain should have the halogen atom coming off of it. So for the longest chain for this haloalkane, it will be this chain here of six carbons and we would call that hexane. The next step is to number the chain from the end closest to the halogen. So we will number from here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That allows you to say that the halogen is on the second carbon here and the halogen that we have is the chloral halogen. Okay, so the next part is to name your halogens first. And you would do that alphabetically, including any di tri if you need to. So, so far we would have two Chlorohexane. Then we go on to have a look at the other branches that we have. So here we have a methyl branch, so we need to put that into the name as well. So now we have two chloro, five methyl, hexane. For these examples you need to state the classification of the molecule and then try and name the molecule. We will start by looking at the classification for each molecule. If you're not familiar with this representation of molecular structure then I'll link my video below on um, using molecular structure and skeletal formula. This structure here has the bromine atom on the end of a chain so that would make this a primary haloalkane. Whereas here you have your chlorine atom which is in the middle of the chain. So this is a secondary haloalkane. And then finally this chlorine is at a branch point where it's joined to three carbons. So this is a tertiary haloalkane. If we look now at naming the molecule, we need to find the longest chain of carbons. So that's this chain of three carbons, one, two, three. And that would be propane. We then number the chain from the end closest to the halogens. We've got one, two, three, and this is a bromo. So this will be one bromo propane. Looking at the secondary example, we, the longest chain is one, two, three, four here. So that will be based on butane. We're then going to have a look at numbering from the end closest to the halogen. So we've got one, two, three, four. So the name is going to start to chloro. Then we're going to have a look at the other branch. So we've got another branch here, which is a methyl, and it's on number three. So that's going to be three methyl butane. And the final example, we've got a chain of one, two, three, four, five. So the name will be based on pentane. 
Okay, then I'm going to number from the end closest to the chlorine, and that is either side on this one. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have three chloro, and the branch is a methyl, and it's also a number three. So we have three methyl pentane. Let's have a look now at the different ways that we could synthesize haloalkanes. One way that we can synthesize haloalkanes is preparation using UV light and you would have looked at this last year when you were looking at antioxidants and free radicals. We're going to look at it in more detail now. So when we're using UV light we have a three-step process. The first step is initiation. This is where we take our chlorine or fluorine or bromine molecule and we split it up using UV light. And we're going to use single headed curly arrows to show this. So here we have a chlorine molecule and the line between the two atoms represents two electrons in a covalent bond. When you have UV light attra attacking the chlorine molecule, you have one electron goes to each of the chlorine atoms from the bond. This creates two chlorine radicals, which are highly reactive. The next step is propagation. So here we're going to have a chlorine radical attack a methane molecule. So the one electron comes here, one electron comes from the bond, and then the other electron goes to the methyl part. So we end up with HCl and a methyl radical. This methyl radical can then in turn attack a chlorine a a molecule. To produce chloromethane and a chlorine radical. As you can see in each step here we have one radical going in and then one radical being produced which can then carry on the chain reaction. The final step is termination and this is where two radicals can join together to terminate the reaction. So we have three choices we can either have two chlorine radicals reacting to form a chlorine molecule again. We can have a we could have a methyl radical reacting with a chlorine radical to produce more methyl chlorine to produce more chloromethane. Or you could have two methyl radicals reacting to produce ethane. You get a large mixture of products produced when you use UV light to prepare haloalkanes. It's not really a useful synthetic group to haloalkanes because you don't know which one you're going to produce. The chloromethane that is produced here could carry on in further propagation reactions to produce dichloromethane, trichloromethane, tetrachloromethane. So you won't just get one haloalkane being produced, you'll have a number of different products being produced. For each of these molecules, show an initiation, propagation and termination step that would allow you to produce the molecule. So looking first of all at 1-bromopropane, the initiation step that you would have to use would need to involve bromine and would be using UV light to form two bromine radicals. Your propagation step would involve propane and one of your bromine radicals and this would allow you to form a propyl radical. You could then have a termination step involving a pro the propyl radical and a bromine radical or you could have this go on further to react with a 
another bromine molecule. I'm going to write out a termination step. A more useful synthetic route to haloalkenes is addition reactions of alkenes. If we take ethene here, you can either add a hydrogen halide such as HX to get a mono substituted haloalkane or you can add halogen directly to get a di-substituted haloalkane. The mechanism for these reactions will be discussed later in the alkene topic. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. The next video will look at the reactions that the haloalkanes can undergo. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Ken for regular updates on new videos. Bye!